takes a while to go live. So, hey Flower Tribe, it's Kelly Lehman from Cranberry Fields Flower Farm. And today I wanna to give you some great hydrangea cutting tips. So if we haven't met yet, it's nice to meet you. My name is Kelly Lehman. I'm the owner of Cranberry Fields Flower Farm here in Cranberry, New Jersey. And I love giving you guys fun free flower tips. So please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit that bell notification so you know whenever I post another fun free flower tip video. So let's dive right in. So I had a great flower question that was sent in by a Flower Tribe member. His name is William Whipple. And I think he actually just sent it in about an hour ago. And I was about to reply to him and I will, but I, in the meantime, I said, let me just make a quick video so I can give uh, more of you guys some value uh, from the answer of this question. So his question was, can I trim back some of my overgrown hydrangeas that are kind of spilling over, I guess, either a sidewalk at this time of year? And um, here's my best advice for that. So for the most part, a lot of you might have some hydrangeas that come in on that old wood. And so the story is next year's blooms are being placed, are being put in place right now on those stems. So if you cut a lot back from those stems, you're gonna be cutting off some of next year's flowers. And I'll show you what I mean by that. However, if you are growing something like the Annabelle hydrangeas or the Incredible hydrangeas, the hydrangeas that were white, they weren't like that purpley blue that the Endless Summer are, they're more of like that white and that green stage now, these are the ones that you can cut back this time of year because next year's blooms won't be put in place until next spring. So while I have like the camera kind of over here, I have my friend, um, you know, filming for me, which is awesome. These are my Annabelle hydrangeas. These are the ones that were kind of white and fluffy in the beginning of the season. These guys, it's okay to cut them back if they're kind of spilling over. Like even mine right now, we're getting very overgrown. They're kind of spilling over. It's okay to trim these guys back. So you can make like giant bouquets and I'll show you what some of my giant buckets of bouquets looks like in a few minutes, but it's okay to cut these back because even if you cut these stems back, like if I cut a very long stem like this, it's okay because next year's flowers are not being put in place on this stem where I just cut it back right now. So this stem, you know, can be cut back here, can be cut back here. It's not gonna make a difference with next year's flowers because this is a smooth hydrangea and it comes in on new growth. So this plant can easily be cleaned up, you know, very, very easily this time of year. You can give it like a nice little shaping. It's not a big deal. Um, the best time to prune back this hydrangea is at the end of winter or early spring. That's the best time because it's dormant. Um, you don't want to encourage a lot of new growth right now because you're kind of at the end of the growing season. So it's already August here in my New Jersey flower farm. We're planting hardiness zone six, and this plant is going to start to go dormant in the fall. So when you do a heavy pruning, it's going to encourage the plant to like push forth a lot of new growth. And you really don't want that plant to do that towards the end of the season. You want it to kind of get ready to go to sleep. You want it to worry more about like, you know, the roots and the rest of the health of the plant. You don't want it to concentrate on those blossoms. So you really don't want to give a heavy pruning back this time of year, but it's okay to do that tidying up on this plant, on your limelight hydrangea. I'm gonna uh, just kind of circle the camera around a little bit. So this big giant mama that you see in back of me, uh, so you see that like that big white one there that's the limelight hydrangea the same thing you can give that one a little tidying up and um you know but you don't want to do a heavy pruning by any means so i'm going to walk you back very slowly though because i'm trying not to lose my internet connection sometimes when we walk too fast we kind of like you know get disconnected for a bit so we're going to walk back very slowly because i want to show you what my endless summers look like and i want to show you if you do want to tidy one of those up like the blue the purpley blues or the pinks um i'm going to show you how i would tidy up that plant this time of year but you have to be super careful because you don't want to cut off all of next year's blooms so i'm like tripping over lucy right now as i'm walking backwards i'm ready to like just completely like wipe out over this massive dog so hello i see you i know okay so let's kind of take a little walk over here this is one of the giant buckets of the Annabelles that I just told you about. We're gonna make gorgeous flower arrangements out of these. Uh, we've got our Cranberry uh, Flowers of the Month Club that I, I still deliver in Cranberry. And so those are gonna go out to some you know, happy folks this week. And we also have 
thousands and thousands of sunflowers coming into bloom. And I'll tell you what, guys, I would, uh, I'm would i going to try to also do a YouTube live right after this one in my sunflower field to give you some great sunflower tips. So I'm hoping I'm going to get to that after this video. I want to give you like a double live today. So, because this is like flower season. I'm trying to give you guys as much value as I can as the flower farm is in full bloom. So let's get back to these other hydrangeas that I was telling you about. So over here in back of me, this is a whole bunch of my endless summer hydrangeas. And I wanna answer another question from a Flower Tribe member. They said, when is the best time of year to move them, to transplant them? So I moved about 15 very large hydrangeas, very large uh, endless summer hydrangeas last year, and we did it in fall. So the best time of year to like move yours around, because these guys were not doing well at all. I had them planted in the back of one of my flower farm rows, and they didn't bloom for like five years. And I did every trick in the book. I actually made you guys a few really great videos on why isn't my hydrangea blooming, and you could check that out. I will link my hydrangea. I have like a care tip like a series. I think there's like 62 videos on there now. And one of my most popular ones is why isn't my hydrangea blooming? So I did every trick in the book. They still wouldn't bloom. And I realized they were just not getting enough sunlight. And so I moved them in fall. I made sure that they were hydrated before I moved them. And then we moved them to this section, which gets a lot of morning sun and then some afternoon shade. So um, this is what they're looking like now. They look terrific. I'm really happy with how they came out. And so I'm gonna show you what I would do. You can tell I don't have a load of blooms on them. And that's another question that, that Flower Tribe members have asked. So like, you know, I, I have this beautiful hydrangea. I just put it in the ground last year, but it didn't give me any blooms. And that's okay because the first year that you kind of transplant it or that you plant a hydrangea, it's just getting established. So the plant knows, you know, I've only got so much energy and I'm, brand, I'm like the new kid on the block. I need to concentrate on just getting established right now. So it's establishing its root system, it's putting all that energy into just getting happy in its new home. So it's okay that it doesn't push forth blooms that first or second season. It's not a big deal, it's actually very normal. So I'm okay with that. And another thing that happened was we had any kind of blooms that might have come in were kind of frozen off by a late spring cold snap that we had because those blooms were coming into place super early in the season and then that cold snap just kind of shut them off but we did have a couple blooms so here's what one of them looks like now so this is one that survived that cold snap and i was very happy that it did actually you know appear this this early in the stage you know when i just put it in the ground last year but if i did want to tidy up this plant Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to make a short bouquet. I'm not gonna use those really, really long stems like I just showed you. I'm gonna make like a shorter bouquet. So I'm gonna come in here and I just wanna show you that next year's flowers are already coming into place. So if you see that little like bud right there, that little growth, that green growth, that's going to be like next July's flowers for me. So I know that when I come in here and if I snip off below that, I'm gonna be cutting off, you know, at least one flower. So, but I'm okay with that. I have a whole, you know, hydrangea bush here. It's not that big of a deal. I think what happens when people start to get upset is when their landscaper or like, you know, a spouse comes in and they come and they like cut these hydrangeas down at like the end of fall and they cut them to the ground because it looks like all the neighbors are doing that, you know, to kind of, you know, they think that's the hydrangea thing to do. And they're basically cutting off all your flowers that are gonna come in in July. So if you wanna do a little cleanup, Here's my best advice. You're gonna to go uh, to where those blooms are and you're gonna cut, I would say like above, like those new flowers. So I'm gonna give it a little snip right here. Now I know that I've got like a, the little cleanup done. I've got a little bud for, a, you know, like a nice arrangement, but I also saved these little buds that were going to come in for next year's flowers. So I have like the best of all worlds right now. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this bloom right beneath it. So as you can tell, I've got like this beautiful flower. I might want to clean it up. It's already kind of like drooping to the ground anyway, but instead of cutting it all the way back here, like on the stem, I'm not going to cut it that long. I'm going to come up and as you can see, these are next year's flowers. So I'm going to leave them in place and I'm going to snip right above it. And now I've got next year's flowers are nice and safe. They're protected. They're on the stem. And yet I cleaned up the plant a bit. I don't have that heaviness of this bloom, you know, kind of like dripping over onto the ground. And now I can make a pretty flower arrangement out of this.
And what I'll do is I'll just strip off the leaves. And I love cutting them at this time of year because they're actually like semi-dried. And so this is gonna make a beautiful arrangement. And I wanted to show you an arrangement that I, I cut just a few weeks ago. So this is, you know, from this endless summer bush. These actually are completely dry right now. So after just a few days, the water evaporated from the vase I had them with. I made sure that I kept it away from direct sunlight and they dry to this beautiful, beautiful dried flower arrangement that I can have like all year long now. And so I'm just gonna add these guys to the vase. It's a good idea though, you know what? I need to have like a little bit of a, a shorter vase, I think, because these are shorter stems. It's a good idea as they're drying out completely to let them absorb a little bit of water. So that's kind of like what I have this one for. Hold on one second, let me get in here better. So I've got this cute little arrangement that I keep in my bathroom and these are all, look how short these stems are, but this arrangement is so adorable. So I have this in my bathroom. This is like a great guest room arrangement. And these are just little endless summer flower heads that I made sure I cut the short stems. And to be honest with you guys, most of these flower heads are very ugly. Uh, like the top of them, actually, I'm gonna show you how I hide. I kind of hide their like, you know, dented up areas. So like this was, you know, kind of all browning, and there's a lot of them that aren't looking very good. And I put those crummy sides on the inside of the arrangement. So the, the, the pieces of them that didn't look so great on the bush, like over here, this guy's kind of burnt up. It's kind of beat up. I put that part right smack in the center of the arrangement. Oops. So I kind of hide the worn out pieces. And then as you can t see, I like keep the beautiful pieces on the outside. And so you can make a lot of little mini arrangements and put them all over the house or bring them to your neighbor, bring them to a friend, and it's super fun. And here's another great tip I wanna give you right now. Let me kinda of get down here a little bit lower. Sometimes these blooms start losing their color after a while. So you can use florist spray paint. And I showed you guys this, I think in last week's uh, video, but here's the blue. I think I showed you like the green last time. Here's what the blue looks like. As these Endless Summer and Nico start losing their color, I just use like a, a fresh flower spray paint. So this isn't regular spray paint, it's for fresh flowers. It's a great florist power tip. I have um, this linked in my Amazon shop page. Any things that I talk about, I always have in my Amazon shop page. And I also have my online flower guides where you guys can get a lot of tips on how to grow these beautiful flowers in your own backyard. Those are always listed uh, below. And here's what I do with this. I just take a little bit of a spray. I'm gonna actually spray it away from my flowers here. And you can tell it just brightens up those colors. So there's a big difference between the before and the after. So that's kind of fun. And then it just makes your flowers a little bit brighter if you want. And put that in here, brightens it up, and you have a beautiful bouquet. And the same thing with these guys. They started to lose a little bit of their color, so I'm gonna give it just a quick little pick-me-up. And I keep this in my kitchen. So now I've got an arrangement that's gonna last me for months and months, and it's really beautiful and it makes me happy. And so that's my answer for William Whipple's question today. So thank you for sending that in. And guys, please keep those hydrangea and other flower questions coming because I base all of my YouTube videos off of the Flower Tribes questions. And I also base um, all of my uh, podcasts on the Flower Tribes questions. So I'm gonna try to squeeze another YouTube live in in about 10 minutes in the sunflower field. Uh, but in the meantime, if you found any, um, any enjoyment or if you got any great tips today, please give me a thumbs up. Please leave me a comment. Please let me know where you're viewing this from in this great, big, beautiful world. I watch all the comments at the end of this, like later on at night, and I love seeing where you guys were viewing it from. I love to know what the weather was like in your neck of the woods. We are still having a heat wave. We haven't had rain in so long, and we're still going to be in like the 90s this week here in New Jersey. So let me know what temps are like in, in your neck of the woods. I love reading about that. And um, yeah, so check us out on my Cranberry Fields Instagram page. I do a Monday inspiration every Monday. I got to post one up pretty soon. And join me on my podcast and check out those online flower courses. They are super easy to follow videos that help you grow my favorite low maintenance flowers in your own gardens. And then I show you how to actually make beautiful arrangements out of the flowers that you grow in your own backyard so you can bless your family and friends with beautiful arrangements. Okay guys, so I hope to see you in just a few minutes over in the sunflower field 
and um, thanks for joining me in this video. I'll see you in a bit. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.